This video is on the 834 enrollment. It's going to be a high level uh, review of this transaction uh, showing you basically how it works and I'm also going to spend uh, a fair amount of time going over uh, the transaction itself so you can get familiar with the actual EDI transa transaction. Uh, for the overview of this video uh, we're going to be going over the important segments in loops uh, we're going to go over the beginning seg segments and then uh, the the most important parts of this transaction, the, the member level and the coverage levels, and we'll go over how to change and add and terminate, uh, you know, a member as well as going over the uh, health coverage loops and the product lines and the dates, as well as some provider information in some of the segments. So hopefully this will be a, a, a helpful. Uh, introduction to this transaction. Basically how this works is that when a member is enrolled they're going to send an 834 transaction um, through their sponsor. The sponsor could be your employer, it could be another insurance agency, whoever the sponsor is they're going to get that 834 and uh, they're going to process that. Now there's a lot of different varieties on uh, how you might do the 820, the premium payment that will go with it. Um, it might be online, it might be um, through another manual process, but uh, at some point in time after you do the enrollment, a payment will have to be sent uh, to pay the premium as well. Now you can see on this flowchart how uh, the 834 uh, goes to the sponsor and it it, uh, it ends up into an A34 transaction which goes to the payer and this transaction could be uh, if you're going to shop for new insurance coverages then it might just be a, a compare or audit where nothing's really changed you're just looking at uh, different insurance products or it might actually be you know where you're adding a member to an existing um, insurance coverage uh, or you're terming them or reinstating them and we'll go over those right now. I hope to make this short so we can uh, get this uh, transaction in front of you as soon as we can. This is an actual 834 transaction. Um, if you were to actually put this into your translator, you should probably be able to pass this you know, fairly uh, easily. But I'll go over this very quickly. Uh, I've done other uh, videos on I, uh, EDI transactions and overviews, so I'm going to skip past this ISA and GS envelope. You know, this is just includes your sender and receiver information, basically. And then uh, we'll jump right to the 834 transaction. You can see it right here. It's in the ST segment. Okay. If you're familiar with EDI, you have a tag here at the beginning of each segment and uh, the ST is the beginning of the transaction and, and that asterisk there is the element separator. A34 tell you, tells you that it's um, uh, an enrollment uh, as does this code right here, 220. A1 is, is the version. Now there's an important a high level point I want to make about this beginning segment. It's a required segment and right here you'll usually have a 2 or a 4. It's usually a 2 where you're going to make a, an add or or a term or reinstate that's always going to be two but sometimes if you have a scenario where um, uh, you set up a web interface for example and you're just doing some shopping then it's going to be a four because you're just auditing or comparing only you're not changing any records so that's an important element to to be aware of and I believe that's uh, BGN 08 one two three four five six seven eight yeah um, now I, I'm going to go past these initial dates and, and quantity segments because those are um, those are higher level than uh, what I want to jump into right now. Those are, are specific to you know how many you've processed and quantities. And uh, let's go to the sponsor name. Uh, you'll see that the NM1 will have a P5 here. That tells you that uh, that's the sponsor basically. And uh, you'll have a FI for you know your tax ID, and you'll include it there. Uh, then you have a payer uh, in NM1IN, 
and it will also have their tax ID. Now, when we go to uh, the actual 2200 level, that this is really where this transaction begins to uh, put in some very inform important information. The INS segment itself is a critical segment. It includes uh, the maintenance uh, type that um, that you're working on, like uh, 021, for example, that's an add, and a 001 is actually a change, um, 025 is reinstate, and those are actually maintenance type codes that tell you what you're going to do. Um, the code that follows after that is actually a maintenance reason code, and there are several of those. Um, the 28 that you see here actually means an initial enrollment. Uh, but there's, uh, I don't know, maybe about 50 other codes. Uh, it could be divorce, birth, death, adoption, uh, you know, quit, fired, you know, voluntary withdrawal. There's all kinds of maintenance reason codes that you can include. So make sure that those match. And I'm going to skip around just a little bit for a moment here. This code right here in the 2300, now this is the member level. If you go lower in this transaction into the healthcare coverage, you're going to see it again over here in the 2300 when you talk about the insurance coverage levels. I apologize for skipping for a little bit, but just just kind of be aware of that, okay, because they're kind of related. If you're going to have an initial enrollment, for example, a 021, then I would kind of expect to have a 021 in the coverage as well. So this transaction works in such a way that here is the people, if you will, in the loop 2000, and then here are the products, you know, the the coverages that you're working on. So I uh, apologize for that jumping. I'm going to go back up here and slow down for a minute so you can uh, we can walk through this. So you have your 20, 2000 level loop and your INS segment. It includes your... Uh, the type of change that you're going to make if it's going to be you know uh, add change or delete for example if you're just going to audit that's going to be a zero three zero uh, the next important one is this ref zero f that's your subscriber number okay uh, and and the reference below that is going to be a group or policy number and uh, that will you know these are all basic uh, IDs that you'll have for each of the payers know that now I, I worked on enrollments nationwide and what I'm telling you is the basics but when you work with payers they're quite a bit of diversity about how they use these qualifiers so if you know if it's not exactly what you're seeing there you're gonna to have to check with your payer but just know that Qualifiers, you know, are something that I think kind of get misused or used for various purposes. But I think th these, for the most part, are uh, and should be used for the subscriber number and the policy number or group number. Okay. Now, just below that, you'll see this N one IL, and that's the um, actually the patient information, which is going to, it's going to include their name and, for example, the social security number. You know that if it's a qualifier of 34 and N one O eight that it's going to have a social security number. And then the addresses are, are in the N3 and N4 segments that follow, uh, as well as a birth date. I include a, a birth date of something that's over 100 years old. Um, that's supposed to be safe harbor or, you know, non-PHI. And it, this, is, this is just made up data. AUI segments are just basically your language segments, not an important segment, really. Um, you won't always see a responsible person code. I put this in there really just for an example so you can see what it would look like. If you had like a parent-child scenario, you'll see an N and one QD, and this will be mom or dad, for example, and their um, ID numbers over here in N and one eight and 9. Um, and here we get to the actual insurance products here. This is the 2300 loop. You'll notice it by this HD. Uh, segment and here you see that 021 so we know that we're adding um, some coverages now look at this element right here HLTH this stands for health I've included other um, 
coverage levels or coverage lines of business like HLT would be health, AK would be mental health, DEN for dental, MM for major medical, VIS for vision, and uh, PDG for prescription drugs. There's another code, a different code, for example, mail order drugs. But you can see some of the biggest um, used health coverage there. Now, no, notice also in this segment you have an element for INT, IND. That stands for individual. And that relates to the person that, uh, the, the person, the type of person that you, it could be an individual, for example, or, or a spouse or something like that. And they have a list of these in the WPC guides that you can list. I put in IND because it's the most prevalent, I think, um, especially if you're dealing with something like Medicaid, for example. Now, in this loop, the 2300 loop, you'll have uh, some dates, and they're important. Uh, there's a beginning and in, a benefit begin and end date. And you can always recognize these by this uh, qualifier right here, 348 or 349. And then you just give your dates. Uh, so it's really just that simple. Um, that covers really the highest uh, level of this transaction. I think if you're going to include, for example, primary care information, then you'll have a 2310 loop. Uh, I'm going to point out one other thing here. On the 2310 loop, the provider information, um, you it actually has an N and 110. Now, this is if you use EDI a lot, you uh, in the healthcare market, you realize that N and 110 is basically never used, but in an A34, they actually use this element, and it's required. It's the relationship code to to tell whether or not. This, uh, the relationship of this doctor to the insured is an established patient or not established, or I've used 72 for unknown. Um, also, um, it's not required to use the name of the provider if you've got uh, the MPI in there, which, you know, I'm just using any MPI uh, numbers, for example. Um, and that's really a basic overview of how the A34 works. I do apologize if that's a little bit sketchy, but um, we do have, you know, that information there, uh, and, and you can see this transaction in its entirety. And I'll let you know, uh, give you a look at what the end looks like. Again, if you were to take this transaction, I ran it through a translator, for example, and it came out as uh, absolutely clean, uh, depending on what kind of translator you use. Uh, you know, you might, you know, it might ask you for some other specific, like, uh, it didn't like the birth date, I think, when I used uh, a birth date in the 1800s, but that's just cosmetic there. That's a quick overview on the A34. Um, I apologize for it being a little bit jumpy, but, uh, you know, you get a basic overview of how that works. If you'd like to know something more specific, um, drop me a note and let me know uh, some area that you're confused about or you want more information on. Um, I actually did uh, this quick uh, overview here because uh, someone requested an 834. Um, there are about a dozen EDI transactions. If you need help on one, uh, let me know what's most important to you and I hope to help out. Thanks so much for watching.